Today I'm working on C sharp notes. I'm gonna horse around a little bit with it today. Uh, I've got some delay and reverb. Uh, well, I'm on a little pedal board over here, so the first C sharp shape will be like a C shape. And I'll find uh, those notes at second fret, second string, and fourth fret, fifth string. Little, we, we just will celebrate with a little uh, digital delay. All right, the next shape is pa that was pattern one. Pattern two is our uh, A shaped chord. This is based at the fourth fret, the root of that chord. Fourth fret, fifth string, and that overlaps with uh, the previous shape. Yeah, then uh, sixth fret, third string. That's going to overlap into pattern three, which is our G shaped chord. So that gives us sixth fret, third string, and ninth fret on the sixth string and uh, ninth fret on the first string. All right, and that uh, leads us to pattern four, like a E-shaped chord. So that gets us, uh, again, ninth fret, sixth string, 11th fret, fourth string, and ninth fret, first string. And if you're not sure, or if I'm going too fast or something, get Barrett Tagliarino's Chord Tone Soloing. I'm looking for my copy. <laughs> there it is. I'm going to reach for it. This book will show you all about Caged uh, on page like 28 or 27, 26, page 25. So Chord Tone Soloing by Barrett Tagliarino is highly recommended. Excellent book. So there you are, ninth fret, uh, sixth string, 11th fret, fourth string, and ninth fret, first string. That's gonna overlap here with pattern five, uh, fourth string, 11th fret, and second string, uh, 14th fret. That would be this chord. All right. And now, that's gonna get us back to pattern one, an octave higher from where we started, which is second string, 14th fret, fifth string, 16th fret. An octave of this, higher. Now we've got uh, pattern two, which is our A-shaped chord, based at 16, 16th fret, fifth string, and 18 on the third string. All right, well now we're gonna take that 18th fret, third string, C-sharp, and uh, tie it in with the 21st fret on the sixth and first string. So, once you learn the C sharps, you know, you could mess around with something like this, like uh, I rolled the trouble off my telly, it seems kind of buzzy. Kind of buzzy, very buzzy. Oops. Well, now if you go uh, a whole step below, you can. Kind of sounds cool. A whole step below a C sharp is B. 
That sounds awesome. I mean, to me, that that's energizing. It's like it just has that rock sound that I like. Yeah, that B to C sharp. Brilliant. And then you could, you know, generate phrases like It's a lot of echo, man. I'm sorry if that's too much, but uh, I hadn't plugged in this pedal board for a while, so I finally found the power supply. It was kind of crammed in the corner over there. It kind of falls off of the Dunlop uh, power supply unit, or the, the power unit, the cable kind of falls out, and it was smashed back in the corner. So anyway, there's your C-sharp notes if you're interested. Uh, and don't, don't just take it from me. Take it from Barrett Tagliarino. Uh, Chord Tone Soloing. It's a great book. And that's kind of really helped me uh, step up my game over the years. I haven't made it all the way through the book, but uh, it's so awesome. Nobody really can. <laughs> I should work on that a little bit. All right. I got to prepare for a gig, so uh, I'm going to do that. But... Uh, Hopefully, everybody's working on your learning the notes up the neck, and that's all I'm trying to do is help everybody learn every note on your fretboard, and that uh, gives you a little bit of confidence. Thanks a lot.